Today, highlights from the 2015 American Society of Hematology Annual Meeting and Exposition. Welcome to Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus. At this year's ASH, findings in multiple myeloma dominated the news. One exciting report revealed the eradication of malignant cells in a patient with advanced disease who had more than 90% multiple myeloma cells in his bone marrow, suggesting the potential to cure the condition. One month after an infusion of allogeneic T cells modified by an anti-B cell maturation antigen chimeric antigen receptor, no malignant cells were found in the patient's bone marrow. The patient was among 12 people treated with the therapy. Of the other participants, one achieved a very good partial response, two others had partial responses, and the remaining eight had stable disease. For the first time, we have demonstrated that CAR T cells can eradicate large burdens of multiple myeloma, reported lead investigator Dr. James Kochendorfer at the conference. We saw the patient just this week, and he is still in complete stringent remission, which is ongoing for 14 weeks. The addition of bortezomib to lenalidomide and dexamethasone significantly improved progression-free survival and overall survival for patients with untreated multiple myeloma, according to findings from a phase three trial presented at the meeting. In the 473 patient SWOG S0777 study, the triplet was associated with a 13-month improvement in progression-free survival and a 29% reduction in the risk of death. Median progression-free survival with bortezomib was 43 months versus 30 months with lenalidomide and dexamethasone alone. The median overall survival was 75 months in the bortezomib arm compared with 64 months for the doublet. The overall response rate was 81.5% with the triplet and 71.5% for the control. Lead investigator Brian Dury remarked that the findings from the study suggest the triplet should be a new standard of care for untreated patients with multiple myeloma. There were several studies presented at ASH in the relapsed refractory multiple myeloma setting. Data from the Termalin MM1 presented at ASH showed a median progression-free survival of 20.6 months when exazomib was added to lenalidomide and dexamethasone compared with 14.7 months with lenalidomide and dexamethasone alone. Dr. Shazi Kumar from the Mayo Clinic commented on the phase three study in an interview with Enclave. Uh, the, this is a relatively large trial with 722 patients who were randomized between uh, exazomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone versus lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And the, the results of the trial showed that the triplet regimen, which included the exazomib, was able to improve the progression-free survival by roughly about five to six months, um, which is a clinically significant uh, finding. Uh, the, the depth of response was improved uh, and the overall response rate was also improved by the addition of exazomib. The addition of the PD-1 inhibitor pembrolizumab to an established multiple myeloma regimen elicited responses in 76% of 17 patients with relapsed refractory disease in the Keynote 023 trial. Among the 13 patients who responded to the combination therapy, four patients achieved a very good partial response and nine patients exhibited a partial response. Additionally, three patients had stable disease, leaving one patient whose disease progressed. In another study, the addition of the monoclonal antibody daratumumab to a standard multiple myeloma regimen generated responses in 81% of patients with relapse or refractory disease without introducing any new safety concerns, according to updated findings from the Phase 1-2 Gen 503 study. The overall response rate among 32 patients who participated in the expansion phase of the trial included 11 patients who achieved a complete response nine patients with a very good partial response, and six patients with a partial response. In chronic lymphocytic leukemia, data from the Phase three Resin-A2 trial show that ibrutinib reduced the risk of death by 84% versus chlorambucil in treatment-naive elderly patients with CLL or small lymphocytic lymphoma. The results, which were simultaneously published online in the New England Journal of Medicine, also showed a two-year overall survival rate of 98% with ibrutinib. The combination of idelalisib to bendamustine and rituximab reduced the risk of progression or death by 67% compared with bendamustine and rituximab alone for patients with relapsed refractory CLL. After 12 months of follow-up, the median progression-free survival with the idelalisib triplet 
was 23.1 months compared with 11.1 months for bendamustine and rituximab. Additionally, there was a 45% reduction in the risk of death with the addition of idelalisib, although the median overall survival had not yet been reached in either arm. In acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the addition of the multikinase inhibitor mitostorin to chemotherapy improved survival compared with placebo. The median overall survival in the phase three study was 74.7 months versus 25.6 months. Onclive spoke with Dr. David Steensma of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute regarding this phase three study. Uh, believe it or not, the patients uh, who got the metastorin actually lived longer, and it's very rare that we see an overall survival benefit uh, with therapies in acute myeloid leukemia. We're still using the three and seven regimen that was developed in the early 1970s as our standard therapy, and so many other trials have not shown benefit adding extra drugs to this. But this one, in a genotype-targeted way, uh, did show a benefit. The benefit accrued whether patients had FLT3 ITD or the TKD, so it was present for uh, both groups. Uh, many of the patients went on to transplant, so the data were analyzed, both censored for transplant and then in an intention to treat analysis. And the toxicity really wasn't very different between the two arms. More findings from ASH than what we highlighted here include an 80% overall response rate with the BCL inhibitor venetoclax and a 95% response rate with the TKI acalabrutinib, both in CLL. Also reported were impressive findings with CAR T-cell therapy in NHL as well as ALL. More information on these findings as well as additional interviews conducted at ASH can be found right here on Enclave.com. Thank you for watching Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.